Hi everybody, hope you are well. Today I'd like to have a look at three beautiful houses by American architect uh, Judith Chaffee, recently published by Princeton Architectural Press in a book titled Powerhouse, The Life and Work of Judith Chaffee by Christopher Domin and Catherine Maguire. The first house was commissioned by Chaffee's mother and her new husband in 1969 when they relocated to Arizona after both retired from careers in Chicago. The Viewpoint residence is sited on a high elevation, near the far northwestern edge of a multi-acre ranch property on the west side of Tucson. Primary vehicular access is from the southeast, with a curving drive gently moving through the low desert scrub until the southern elevation of the house appears in full view. The building displays its full height of over 6 meters along with an uninterrupted clerestory glazing above and uh, cast in place solar shades at ground level. The drive directs guests to parking east of their residence and provides access to the eastern facing entry area. To respond to the harshness of the desert site, Chefi specified a light colored mortar wash over standard concrete block walls to reduce heat gain which also presents a monolithic appearance uh, from a distance. The cast-in-place concrete solar shades limit uh, direct entry of light, and uh, exposed concrete rain leaders divert water in triangular planters on either side of the main entry. A humble but carefully constructed uh, wood door provides access to the public area of the house, past the monsoon rain-fed planters with herbs carefully located adjacent to the walk to stimulate a more fully rounded sensory experience. The scent of mint and rosemary marks the threshold. The only non-native addition to the landscape are in these entry planters. The remaining site is uh, left to palo verde, creosote bush, choya and cacti. Once inside, the lofted interior volume serves multiple public functions, from food preparation to reading, in one grand uh, volume. The interior mortar-washed walls do not meet the ceiling, uh, allowing the clerestory to diffuse light seamlessly into each quadrant. The public spaces, kitchen, dining, living and library, are arranged in a logical four square around a utility core. Low sheltered openings to the south and direct access to the open desert on the north further balance the light. The living area is anchored to the desert floor by a larger fireplace with a polished concrete base. The south side of this large room is dedicated to dining and food preparation. Along the exterior wall, an ample concrete shelf accommodates plants, casual dining and even a workspace with a desert view. The ingenious kitchen cabinet design mirrors the stepped profile of the building while meeting ergonomic and lighting needs. Photographs by Glenn Allison from the mid-1970s show that all items in the house are carefully curated. Chafee uh, created trace drawings of his photos that outline the location and name of each item in the house, including detailed captions. The public areas of the house are situated to the east, with bedrooms and baths to the west, including an exterior shower alcove with uh, desert views. Each zone has a dedicated uh, heat, ventilation and air conditioning unit and uh, exposed ducts. And the general feeling is of movement from east to west, from openness and expansion to inward focus. To avoid uh, excessive heat gain, there are no openings to the west and uh, judicious openings to the south and east. Ten years into Chefi's Tucson practice and after her work had received significant attention in notable publications, a man by the name of Jerry Blackwell contacted Chefi and commissioned a custom house for himself. The site he had in mind sat along the road approaching the entry to Tasson Mountain Park. It included unimproved native Sonoran desert scrub with uh, prominent rock outcroppings and numerous saguaro, ocotillo and barrel cacti. Deer and other desert fauna freely roam through the area. For Chafee, the Blackwell house grew out of the harshness and rhythms of the desert, expressing careful material distinction between interior and exterior. The house appropriately responded to the specific needs of the environment with deep-set glazing to the south, 
operable interior shading devices on the east and minimal west-facing openings to mitigate the heat from the harsh desert sun. The interior arrangement and program developed from a series of intimate working sessions with Blackwell. How do you feel about having guests? Well, I live alone and I like it that way. You don't want people coming to visit? Yes, I do, but I do not want them to stay for more than four or five days. Then let's make the house work that way. The exposed uh, sleeping loft adjacent to the central living space was a result of this early conversation, along with the massive fireplace and solar flue that dominated the interior volume of the house and provided a geometric center for the entire composition. This one-bedroom house with guest loft included a private master suite and ample space for public gathering in the central volume. A two-story high east window looking towards Tucson was integrated into a built-in concrete seating area with an insulated cushion panel to limit direct heat gain. The massive triangular fireplace and solar flue was a prominent element at the center of the composition, separating the entry vestibule from the main living area. For the open guest loft above, Chaffee removed the handrail and provided just enough room for a bed, nightstand and desk, which encouraged guests to move on after a few days. Chaffee designed the Blackwell residence in the late 1970s and it was inhabited by the original client for eight years until Pima County forced abandonment of the structure by not issuing a building permit to replace a freshwater line that had been destroyed by stormwater rushing down the arroyo at the site's entry. Jerry Blackwell tracked water to the house for months before putting the house up for sale. After finally securing the property, the county vetted options for the site and the Blackwell residence slowly became a ruin as doors, fixtures and glazing were removed and destroyed. After years of provocative commentary in the local paper, the house was finally demolished in 1998. The Hyman residence is in Sonoita, on a small ranch parcel of 40 acres, 60 miles to the southeast of Tucson. It is a slightly cooler area with long rolling grasslands dotted with scrub oak and surrounded by jagged mountain ranges. Lee and Marisha Heidman wanted to have a winter ranch to enjoy the views, have natural airflow and embrace appropriate sustainable ideas in their home. They wanted high ceilings, a kitchen, living, dining area that was all one space, a small studio for Marisha to enjoy painting and a guest house separate from the main house. The best mountain views are to the west. The low earth-hugging structure grows out of the ground, with corrugated metal roof lines of the traditional ranch house transitioning into the clear corrugated fiberglass greenhouse roof that is aligned with the slope of the land. The roof slopes into a gutter system to divert rainwater into cisterns for additional irrigation for the greenhouse vegetation. The greenhouse is secured on the south end by the two-room and bathroom guest house, partially sunken into the sloping terrain where the roof reverts to the corrugated metal. The main entrance is subtly tucked behind the open wood steps ascending to the roof deck. The north portion of the house is the private area, including the master suite and the artist studio. The studio is equipped with a put-in-place sculptural formed concrete fireplace with a recirculating air system to provide additional heat. An interior sliding wood panel opens and closes to the living room for more visual and audio privacy. The south corridor steps down to the kitchen and dining area. Additional steps lead down to the partially recessed living room, where put in place concrete seating with cushions lines the south and west walls. With no separating walls, the entire area is a well-positioned open space. The kitchen and the dining area have a direct access to the greenhouse through sliding glass doors that can be opened to let in heat and close to maintain house temperatures. Finally, the roof deck area provides the pleasure of contemplating one's surroundings.
The authors study eight more houses in this volume, so I hope you will ask for it at your local bookstore. Come by Spazio if you're in Milan. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.